Welcome back. I am Kimmy with On William Street, and this week we're talking about quilting and how to come up with a quilting plan. You have your top all done. Now, how are you going to go ahead and quilt it? So this week we are going to talk about our stacked quilt. This is one of our um, spring patterns that we just released a couple months ago, and we're going to go ahead and talk about and walk through the process of how I decided to put, um, how I decided what to put in the quilting throughout the entire quilt. And this one is a lot of fun. It has a lot of negative space in it to work with, and then of course these strong, very graphic elements in the middle. Also, um, so anytime I start a new quilting plan, I do always start with a photo of the quilt. So you're going to see the printout of this one that I'm going to work on. If I have a digital image of it, I'm going to go ahead and use that. I like to have it without um, all the prints and different things that are on it, and um, it gives me a real nice um, flat photo to use. If I don't have a digital printout, however, I am going to go ahead and take a photo straight on it. I'll usually just use my cell phone. It doesn't need to be a super fancy photo, but I do recommend having somebody hold it or putting it up on a design wall or just getting it vertical so that when you take the picture you can get as straight on as possible. If you put it on the floor you're going to notice that you're always going to end up with trapezoids and it's kind of hard sometimes to fit those shapes into those spaces. So definitely have somebody hold the quilt up, try to take a photo straight on with your phone and then go ahead and print out a picture. And if you want to go ahead and print out a couple of them that way um, if you have one that just isn't really going well you don't have to worry about erasing everything you can just toss it and start over. But go ahead and so I'm going to go ahead and grab that and we will get started designing the quilting plan. Um, when I'm designing a quilting plan, every once in a while I will have a quilt that just speaks to me and tells me how it wants to be quilted. And this one kind of did that. Uh, it was, had a very strong element there in the center of the quilt and it had those circles and those curves. And I knew that I really wanted the focus to stay there. It's very symmetrical, it's perfectly centered, it's all lined up. So I knew that I really wanted your eye to be drawn to that. And I thought, well, what can I use to really do that? And immediately I thought of lines. I knew I wanted lines that kind of radiated out from the center. So what I went ahead and did is I thought, well, I don't want just lots and lots of lines, but I knew that just putting in some lines would give that, um, that look and would draw your eye in like I wanted it to, but without having to do the whole background lines. So I went ahead and I'm gonna have my pretend line down the center here, and then I split it in half here as well. And then all the lines, I went ahead and I did measure but for the purposes of a sketch. I don't worry too much about that. But uh, evenly spaced these different lines. And they came in and I had them come in and meet on those center lines and go out from there. So they don't all come into the very center. But you can see how they all kind of line up. But I, um, if you've watched any of my past videos, you'll also know that I'm not going to just leave these lines like that. Um, if I was to do quilting and butt it up to those lines, it's going to get lost very, very easily. So let me finish putting in some of these lines and we'll talk about how I'm going to address that. I'm not sure exactly how many different sections I ended up with. Um, I think my sections here are a little bit bigger than what I did, but that's okay. For, oops, it didn't work at all. For our purposes, it will be just fine. Okay, so now I've got these lines in, and we all know Except if I'm gonna if I quilt right up to each of these lines, I might as well not even have them there. They're gonna get lost very easily. So I knew that I was definitely going to echo them or give them a channel, whichever term you prefer. So just by putting one other little line, that creates some negative space that really is gonna make that element stand out. So now instead of just getting lost and not seeing them, they become a very visual. It's almost like I basically bolded those lines for the quilt design. Now, no matter what I put on the inside, they're still going to be an important part of the design and stand out. I'm just gonna put in a few more here so you can see how that works. All right, so now I've got this design with all of these lines that kind of radiate in and it just really, it's basically like a whole bunch of arrows pointing in and this is good for two reasons. Like I said, the lines draw your eye into the center. Also, because I have all of these curves, the contrast of those straight lines and those angular shapes 
is, is very visually appealing. It creates a lot of interest in the quilt, so it creates some contrast and keeps things, keeps movement and keeps things going. So that um, served two purposes. So if you have a quilt that has a lot of angular lines, consider doing something softer with some curves for the quilting. If you have a quilt that has a lot of curved lines, consider doing something with straight lines for the quilting to kind of offset that. So now I knew I had these shapes, and we all know I'm not going to leave those empty because I quilt things to death, but it really didn't need to be complicated. This one actually was one of the a simpler quilting pattern I came up with, but it really the overall effect looks great. And I went ahead and I just chose four different fillers. Uh, you want to use repetition in your design. You don't want to be, if you, if you get too much going on, sometimes it can look kind of mishmash and not really come together and be cohesive. So when you're uh, doing a quilting plan, really think about repetition and how can you repeat some of those same elements. Uh, it doesn't really need to have a lot of different things going on. You'd be amazed at what you can do just by varying the size and the scale of a few elements. You can make a whole quilting plan to come together and it's going to look fantastic. So I knew I wanted ones that kind of contrasted with each other. So I went, one of the first ones I did was the wishbone. This is one of my favorite fillers and it was a vertical one little curvy and a little vertical. So I put that in there. Then I had to think, okay, what else do I want in here? Well, because this one is so vertical, I actually went ahead and did back and forth lines, but I intentionally did them horizontal so that they would contrast against the wishbones. So after I'd picked those two, the third um, one that I went with, I did go swirls, and it's probably because it's completely different. It's not really a linear shape at all and it's one of my favorite fillers so it serves two purposes makes me happy and mixes things up a little bit so the third section got swirls swirls are really a great filler because they can fit any space and there's so many different ways to do them throw in one more quick one here All right, so now I have the swirls in, and I did come up with one more. I decided I was gonna do one more. This one did end up being vertical as well, but I just did three close lines together, and then a big space. Three close lines together, and a big space. So even in the different um, quilting patterns that I chose, I varied the curves and the straight lines to kind of match the rest of the quilt. And then what I did is I basically just repeated these throughout, um, filled in the different sections as I went around. I did um, mirror them. So if I had the wishbones here, this section would get wishbones. So that's gonna make it look, like I said, we really have this arrow shape going on. So then as you come down, this section would also be the wishbones. That would definitely be personal preference, but because they did connect in multiple places, I decided, you know what, it's gonna be the easiest to just kind of keep that flow. So this would have been swirls, this would have been the back and forth matchstick. So anyways, you can kind of see how that all connected together and created a lot of visual elements. Because this is white in the background, it really creates a lot of texture, but there's enough going on here that it makes you step in look, to look a little bit closer, but it doesn't distract from what's going on here in the middle. And so I have the background all done, and then of course I'm looking at the middle, I'm going, okay, what do I do here? And this is a very, very graphic quilt, and I wanted it to stay that way, so I actually went very, very simple in the middle, but I kept, but I varied things. So some of them, I kind of followed the pattern. So up here, I decided I'm gonna go ahead and just echo this shape here, and around my, my square here. Um, up in the top, I cut it in half, and I did half of them with straight lines this way, half of them with straight lines this way. Down here in this section, I went ahead and did rays out, and sometimes I worked with the shapes, and sometimes I ignored the shapes completely. Oh, all the way in, sorry. We went all the way in, but then over here, I contrasted that with squares. And how did I come up with these one by one? I just threw one in, okay, what do I want to do here? And then I went to the next section. But by knowing that I wanted to keep it very graphic, and very minimal quilting here that helped me to give me a direction in the, in the area I wanted to go. So again, down here, some lines this way. And then this one got some lines the other way. And then some lines this way. Alternate this section, do some lines this way. These ones I actually 
went ahead and did all the way out like this but because I thought it would be cool I then went on the outside section and did alternating lines but only went into that middle section so the middle section gets both and then each of those other sections only have a half of that element and then down here I have this ray that goes all the way around and I separated out this outside shape but then went ahead and kept these two as one shape and echoed around in there. And then of course I had to finish out the bottom one. And this one I did really close rays here. But because we know I'm probably not gonna do the same thing on all of it, I did farther apart rays. So the same element, but I changed the density there. And you can see, like I said, the quilting here, it's, it's cohesive because it's all very similar in style and similar in density throughout that center section. It adds some interest, but it doesn't really detract from the fabrics and the bold statement of the fabrics that are there. I wanted them to read as those big bold solids. So that was my focus with that. And then I put all of my attention into the background. Sometimes borders can be really tricky. This was a very small border. So I'm like, you know, I'm not gonna complicate it. I'm not going to try to do something fancy in there. And I actually just went ahead and echoed the same lines here, but I did them closer together. I like to do borders um, kind of hold the whole thing down. It makes those who are going to go ahead and bind it later very happy because it's not gonna move on them as they're doing it. So the border all the way around just has lines spaced about an inch apart that follow the same angle of the quilting on the inside of the quilt. And that was it. It was really, like I said, this one really spoke to me. It went very easy, um, but the, and the whole plan came together, together very quickly. So don't um, discount discount things that might be a little bit simpler when trying to decide how to quilt it. So, you know, it's totally okay. And sometimes that's just what the quilt needs and it will really make the quilt sing by not overdoing too terribly much. Would this quilt have worked with some um, very busy quilting or more complex designs? Probably, absolutely. That's the beauty of quilts. Like you can quilt them lots of different ways and each one is beautiful in its own right. But sometimes, you know, simple is okay and that's all right. So. Let, look at the quilt top, see if it speaks to you. Think about the contrasting shapes. How can we add some contrast into the quilt with the, with the quilting? Um, what do you want your eye to focus on? How can you use line to draw your eye to that? And consider those elements when you are, when you're planning your quilting design for your quilt top. So hopefully we've given you some good ideas and some elements that you can apply to your own quilting and to your own um, designs. Go ahead and you know, really kind of focus on how can you use the line, how can you use repetition, how can you use these elements to really elevate your quilt top and to kind of take it to the next level. So have fun with the process. Don't stress too much, especially when you're using the pencil and paper. Uh, don't stress too much if it's perfect or not. A, you can always erase it easily. B, um, you'll, you'll focus more on actually making things more precise when it actually gets to the quilt. So don't stress too much in the, during the process of this. And if you have any questions, let me know, send, leave a comment, send us a, an email. Um, we'll definitely try to help out as much as possible if you have any questions. Make sure that you follow us, check out our Instagram and, and Facebook pages, see all the things that we're doing, and we will see you next week. Have a good day. Bye.